So I recently released a book called Host the Holy Ghost. And it's a book that invites you into a journey of a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We have a fasting community where we encourage people to press into God through fasting. And I believe as you fast, God helps you to restore your hunger. And I want to speak to you just for a few moments about hunger for the Holy Spirit. Hunger for the Holy Spirit. Drop that in the chat. The Holy Spirit is a person. He is not a power. He is not a force. He is not someone that you use. He is someone that you can get to know. The Holy Spirit, Jesus says, is a helper. And the hunger for the Holy Spirit comes from the fact that you understand He takes the place of unseen Christ. The Holy Spirit takes the place of Jesus. And He says, it is to your advantage that Jesus goes, John chapter 16, verse 7. Because if He, Jesus leaves, the Holy Spirit will come and the Holy Spirit will be sent by Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. The Holy Spirit is the petition of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is the purpose for which when you get saved, you get the Holy Spirit. That means that you must develop hunger. You must develop thirst for this Holy Spirit. My desire is for the next few moments that this hunger will be cultivated inside of you to know the Holy Spirit. That you will love Him more. That you will fellowship with Him more. I'm going to teach you a few, few things that will help you to have this hunger for the Holy Spirit and to know the Holy Spirit a little bit more. Remember, the Holy Spirit wants to have a relationship with you more than you want to have that relationship with Him. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, it says that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Which tells me that God has this love for us. He pours this love by the Spirit. Jesus reveals His grace to us. But I want you to also know that you can, you must understand that the Holy Spirit wants you. He desires to be with you. This hunger for the Holy Spirit can only come from the revelation that He longs for you. He wants you. He doesn't see you as a somebody that He doesn't interest Himself in you. The same way Jesus extends His grace, God the Father extends His love. The Holy Spirit extends fellowship, friendship. That means He wants to have a fellowship, friendship, companionship, partnership. He wants to help you. Therefore, your hunger for Him really comes from His desire to be with you. Now, a few things that I would like to highlight about this hunger for the Holy Spirit. As you feed yourself on the Holy Scriptures, you will begin to know the Holy Spirit more. The Holy Spirit inspired the Holy Scriptures. And as you read the Scriptures, you will begin to understand Him more and know Him more. You know, in the beginning stages, of my ministry. I wish I would have this experience. I wish I would have this hunger, but I didn't. I had knowledge about the Holy Spirit. I had knowledge about the Father. I had knowledge about Jesus. But I didn't have hunger for the Holy Spirit. I had hunger for miracles. I had uh, more of a drive, desire for miracles, and there's nothing wrong with that. The Bible says to desire the spiritual gifts. The scripture clearly teaches us that we should hunger for the supernatural. But if your hunger for the supernatural is greater than your hunger for the Holy Spirit, you're missing the whole point. The Holy Spirit is not someone you use to get miracles. The Holy Spirit is someone who uses you to do miracles through your life. And the Holy Spirit, as a person, He doesn't like to be used. Nobody likes to be used. 
The Holy Spirit loves to be loved, to be admired, to be appreciated, and to be honored. The Holy Spirit loves to be honored. When He is honored, how is He honored? He is honored when we are hungry for Him. You must understand, a desire is only proven by a pursuit. You cannot have a desire for someone that you don't pursue. The Holy Spirit wants to be honored. He wants to be pursued. He wants to be hungered after. He wants you and I to hunger after Him. When you hunger after the Holy Spirit, when you pursue the Holy Spirit, when you fall in love with the Holy Spirit, when you develop friendship with the Holy Spirit, something will change in your life. I believe everything can change in your life. Disciples knew Jesus, walked with Him for three and a half years and they had a certain relationship with God because of Jesus. They were changed, I would say, but still they denied Him. Still they forsook Him. A lot of troubles they had. They ministered in the anointing that was delegated to them by Jesus, but they didn't walk in their own walk with the Lord. It was until Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit on them after He died and then the Spirit of God came upon them and Jesus was no longer physically with them. Jesus didn't leave them a manual. He didn't leave them, didn't leave them a book. He didn't leave, leave them this particular, you know, written down instructions. He left them a lot of teaching when He was with them. But a lot of application on how to run the church. Should we go to Samaria? Should we go to Judea? When we get persecuted, what to do next? He says, the Holy Spirit will guide you. The Holy Spirit will guide you. Jesus relied on the Holy Spirit to guide and for the disciples to know the Holy Spirit as a personal friend. That they will cultivate the relationship with the Holy Spirit like they had with Jesus. They will continue relationship with the Spirit of Jesus. And disciples did that. When He came upon them, they were never the same. Miracles broke out. People started getting saved in large numbers. Revival broke out. A movement broke out. They were no longer a monument. They were not stuck in the upper room. It, a river bursted on the scene. It changed Jerusalem. They filled Jerusalem with the teachings about Jesus. They gave witness to Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, they knew Holy Spirit so well that at one of their consuls, they could say boldly that it's pleasing to the Holy Spirit and to us. They knew what He loved, they knew what He liked, and they knew what pleased Him. They tried their best not to grieve the precious Holy Spirit. They walked in sync the Bible actually says about apostolic church, they walked in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. There was such a close-knit relationship with this person. And the signs of that, the fruit of that was all over the place. Their character was transformed. Their life was changed. Their ministries were changed. The signs of that was evident. They walked in the fruit of the Spirit. The gifts flew, flowed through them and they walked in the Holy Spirit. I want to inspire you today, I want to encourage you today that you rekindle your hunger for the Holy Spirit. You know what helps me to do that is number one reading the Scriptures. What helps me to do that, number two is to understand the Holy Spirit wants to be with me. That's the truth. It's not something I'm just trying to bring Him on my side. He actually is trying to bring me on His side. He's interested in me. He loves me. Not because I'm special, not because I'm better than other people. It's just because God the Father gives me love. Jesus gives me His grace and the Holy Spirit does not leave me alone. And so I love the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit loves me. The Holy Spirit cares about me and the Holy Spirit is interested in me and He's interested in you as well. So the way I hunger for Him, the way I get to know Him, the way I seek Him is through His Word. I also take moments throughout my day and understand that the Holy Spirit communicates with my heart. He doesn't always communicate with my ears, 
with my eyes. I don't always see him, like I do not see the wind, but I can feel the wind. I don't always sense him physically, though sometimes I do his sense is anointing. But the Bible says that the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart, Proverbs 20, 27. So one of the ways that the Holy Spirit communicates with you, the way He's going to speak back and have fellowship with you is going to be in your spirit and in your heart. Why is this important? Because you have to keep your heart pure. If you don't keep your heart pure, if you don't keep your heart healthy, your communication and fellowship with the Holy Spirit will be hindered. In fact, He will be grieved. He will be quenched. And he will be hurt if your heart is not healthy. Because the Bible says, God blesses those of pure heart, for they will see God. That says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 8 in NLT. David says, Create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit in me. Don't banish me from your presence, God, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Psalm 51. What does that tell me? That tells me that my heart is the contact point for the Holy Spirit not my prayer life, not my fasting, not my discipline, but my heart. The reason why we do all these disciplines is so that we can reevaluate, we can change the heart, we can move the heart, we can ask the Lord, cleanse my heart. Your heart is the contact point for the Holy Spirit. Keep your heart soft. Keep your heart tender. Keep your heart sensitive. Keep your heart pure and keep your heart focused on the Lord. You know, uh, just a few days ago, a few weeks ago, just when the book came out, um, the days before the book came out, I felt, I can't describe it, but felt weird. I felt like I missed Jesus. Not missed Him like I lost Him or missed Him, but like, you know, when you miss somebody, you just have these feelings like, man, I haven't seen you. I missed you. Like, you, you're with them, you know them, but it's just this feeling. I felt that. I'm not saying that I have disconnected from the Lord. It wasn't what I felt, but, it, but what I felt is just, man, I really just miss Jesus. I miss the Holy Spirit. And so, it was on Saturday. It was that Saturday I broke a million subscribers. And two days later, the book came out, Host the Holy Ghost. And so I've been in contact with my demon slayers and my friends and just kind of seeing um, also how busy they are, how God is blessing their ministries and God is blessing my ministry. And that night I told my wife and I said, I think I need to go spend some time with the Lord. She's like, of course. So I booked a um, hotel nearby and just during the day actually that the book was released and on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and just went to be with the Lord. I went to examine my heart. I went to lay my heart before God and say, Lord, is there anything there that's not pleasing to you? Um, how am I doing with you? How are we doing? Just, just to kind of be with the Lord, not to seek a revelation, not to seek a blessing, um, but to be thankful and to press in that my heart is healthy. Because I cannot have a connection with the Holy Spirit with the heart that's not healthy. If your heart harbors unforgiveness, if your heart is full of anxiety, if your heart is full of worry, your connection probably is struggling. If your heart is like Martha's heart, kind of distracted with everything, always running, doing all of this stuff, that's good. But that, that connection is not there. That intimacy is not there. Pause, stop pull away. Maybe you need to retreat for a day from your normal activities. I was doing that in high school actually. Every Wednesday, I would stop every Wednesday. I would not go to school on Wednesdays and I would lock myself in the room with my Bible, with water, with the journal and just examine my heart, press in, repent, be with Jesus, just worship, just be with Him. It's not about just kind of pacing back and forth and I'm not against that and just speaking in tongues the whole day. It's not about that, though it's nothing wrong with that, but it's about being with God. God tells Moses, come up to me and be on the mountain and just be with me. Just be with me. And for seven days, Moses was just there. We don't see if he prayed. We don't know if what he did. He was just there. 
And after seven days, God spoke. Sometimes you don't have to be for seven days like that. You just be there for seven minutes and the presence of God begins to come powerfully. Jesus is always with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. But you might not feel His sweet presence. If you're not hungry for Him, if your heart is not healthy, if you're not feeding off of God's Word, and if you're not taking time to be with Him. And I'm not saying just to go through the devotions or to go through the motions. Devotions are very important. Going through the motions has its place. Sometimes we just have to do things because they're right things to do. But if there's an ache, if you lost that hunger, if you want to get that hunger back, go a little bit further. Retreat a little bit. Stop. Pause. And just be with the Holy and tell the Holy Spirit, I'm hungry for you. I'm thirsty for you. I want to know you, Holy Spirit. Another thing that helps me to keep that hunger is fasting. Fasting is a good way to get your hunger back for the Holy Spirit. Because as you're physically hungry, you're beginning to experience spiritual hunger as well. I don't know how that works, but I know that it does. And sometimes it doesn't work as you're fasting, it works after the fasting. There is this like surge of desire and longing and hunger. Remember, the pursuit, the desire, the pursuit is the proof of your desire. The pursuit is the proof of your desire. If you don't pursue the Spirit, if you don't press into the Spirit, you don't have a proof that you desire the Holy Spirit. So many people claim that they, they love the Holy Spirit, they desire the Holy Spirit, but the proof that they don't is in this. They don't pursue Him. There's nothing in their schedule, nothing in their life that signifies and shows that they are pursuing Him. You can be passive toward the Holy Spirit like many people are. Yeah, I know the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of Trinity. I know the Holy Spirit. He sealed me on the day of my redemption. I know the Holy Spirit. I speak in tongues. That's a passive. Pursuit is different. Pursuit is you know Him personally. He speaks to you. He guides you. You see the proof of His blessing on your life. You see His fruit being developed. Desire is proven by pursuit. You cannot claim to have a desire for someone that you don't pursue. And my desire for you today is that you pursue the Holy Spirit, that you are hungry for the Holy Spirit. You can get that hunger back through fasting. As you're fasting right now, have those moments throughout the day where say, Lord, clean, clean my, cleanse my heart, renew my spirit. Lord, I'm hungry for you. Lord, as I'm hungry for food, I'm more hungry for you. As you read the Word, look for the Holy Spirit in that Word. Let Him guide you and speak to you. Retreat a little bit. Maybe you would take your normal lunch, you know, with your friends. Go somewhere to the park by yourself and just be with Him. You know, I love to do that. Go on these long walks with God. Enoch walked with God and was no more. That's part of my retreat. Sometimes it's going on completely leaving town and it's not about rituals and discipline, none about that. It's about the heart connecting with the Holy Spirit because the heart is the contact point for the Holy Spirit. The heart is where He lives. It's His home. And if that home is dirty and if that home is not pleasant, He will be grieved. So I have to constantly keep watch on my heart Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring issues of life. For in it, the Holy Spirit lives. The Holy Spirit communicates. That contact point for the Holy Spirit is your heart. Take care of your heart. People sometimes ask me, you know, how to know, how to know the Holy Spirit. It's more than just speaking in tongues for hours. It's more than just even reading the Bible for many, many, many hours. It's keeping watch of your heart. By reading the Word, you're putting God's Word in your heart. Speaking in tongues, 
you fill in your heart. Another thing that I love doing is actually reading books on the Holy Spirit as a supplement, not as a source. My, our source is the Bible. Our source is God's Word. But sometimes we need a little bit of supplement. There are so many good books on the Holy Spirit and one of them I just released called Host the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and sometimes it's just the simple reading about somebody who is walking with the Holy Spirit and you begin to feel that fire. Like disciples who walked with Jesus from Jerusalem and the Bible says, was not our heart burning? There's this burning that happens in, in you. You begin to feel that awareness. Your conscience becomes more sensitive. Your heart becomes more sensitive. Your, your world becomes just more aware. The same way as if you read about demons, you become aware of demons around you. I remember when I read the book called He Came to Set the Captives Free by Rebecca Brown and uh, I, uh, <laughs> I became aware of demons instantly. Like literally, that, that, um, that night I couldn't sleep. I thought that witches are going to attack me because what you read, you expose yourself to. And what you listen, you expose yourself to. So as you read in the Holy Spirit, you expose yourself to His presence. That presence begins to invade your life. As you listen to songs about the Holy Spirit, it begins to expose you to the Holy Spirit. Now, if you listen to songs that are other demonically inspired and read books or watch things and they're just not healthy, not only you pollute your heart, but you hurt the Holy Spirit and you hurt your connection to the Holy Spirit. Be hungry for the Holy Spirit. Don't take yourself seriously. Take the Holy Spirit seriously. So many people chase many things. You know, the story of King Saul has always been a story that I come back to as a bad example of what not to do. He didn't pursue God. King Saul didn't run after God. He lost the Holy Spirit's presence, the sweetness, the anointing. And then he spent the rest of his life, about 20 years, chasing David. He never caught David, but he was chasing him. It's almost like God on purpose didn't let Saul catch David because anytime we chase things, hunger for things, pursue things at the expense of God, it's like chasing after the wind. We're almost there to catch it and then it escapes our grasp. We're almost there to grab it. It escapes our grasp. Jesus says, Heathens seek after these things, but for you, seek first the kingdom of God. I would like to tell you, pursue the Holy Spirit. Get your hunger back for the Holy Spirit. People are chasing to be successful. Some are chasing to find a husband or wife. Some are chasing to have kids. Some are chasing their whole, whole passion is to put their kids in college. Some people's passion is to build their house. Some people's passion is to grow their ministry. Some people's hunger is that um, they're just hungry for growth in ministry. What the Bible says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for the Holy Spirit. Be hungry for the Holy Spirit. It's one of the reasons um, we named our church Hungry Generation. We're hungry for God. We're hungry for His Spirit. Have you lost that hunger for the Holy Spirit? You can get it back today. Remember where you had it before. Maybe you've never had it before. Today as you hear about the person of the Holy Spirit who changed the lives of disciples, who empowered Jesus, all the prophets and apostles, all the leaders of the Old Testament, New Testament that walked with God, they relied on Him. He was the source of their inspiration, of their power and holiness. He wants to be the source of yours. He's very gentle, He's very sensitive, but He is a good Spirit. The Bible calls Him Holy Spirit. He wants to guide you. He wants to fill you. He wants to lead your life. You can live either by flesh, walking in your own strength, 
accomplishing everything in your own ability or you can walk in your life by the strength, the power and the enablement of the Holy Spirit. I've walked in the flesh before. I've relied on my own strength before and I can tell you one thing, it is painful. Carrying the burden of life, carrying the burden of ministry is exhausting. But I have a partner now. I have a friend. I have somebody that carries this load for me and sometimes with me. And this person is the Holy Spirit. I want you to know Him. I want you to be hungry for Him. I want you to get your desire back for Him. I want you to cast your burdens on Him. Ask Him to step in in your situation. Communicate with Him throughout your day. Cultivate a pure heart so that you can keep a closer connection. Avoid sins that grieve Him. Well, sins to altogether, but things that grieve Him. Stay sensitive to Him. Don't take yourself seriously. Take Him very seriously and take your heart very seriously. That your heart is pure. But something else that I want to highlight. In your hunger for the Holy Spirit, pay attention to how you treat people. Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, and do not bring sorrow to God's Spirit by the way you live. Remember, He has identified you as His own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. When you grieve the Holy Spirit, you don't lose the Holy Spirit. You lose the sweetness, the manifest presence and the closeness. You lose the peace in your heart. You become irritable. You become snappy extremely impulsive. The worst of you takes control of you when you lose the sweetness of the Holy Spirit. Instead of the fruit being developed, you start to operate in the works of the flesh. You take matters into your own hands. You become the driver of your own destiny. You're no longer led, you're now driven. You're always chasing after that next thing only to see it run from you. But when you honor the Holy Spirit, when you hunger for the Holy Spirit, something happens. First, there's closeness. You fear His near, you feel His nearness. He gives you peace. He gives you calmness, stillness that happens here. That cannot be explained. That doesn't come as a result of good circumstances, everything working out in your life, it comes directly from Him. It's His gift, His comfort, His peace. He begins to open your eyes to the Scriptures. You're no longer going through the motions. You're actually feeding on the Scriptures now. He begins to steer your day and your way in a way that brings God the glory, keeps you away from decisions that could cost you and hurt you he begins to empower your witness. He begins to soften your attitude and your approach to people. And as you walk in step with the Holy Spirit, He begins to reveal to you things about your life and about your future. It is such a glorious life to live hungry for the Holy Spirit because He satisfies. You know, you can be hungry for things that don't satisfy. You can pursue Him and you can actually catch Him, meaning you can actually have Him, you can be with Him. And this is the most incredible side benefit. It's not why we pursue Him, but it's what happens. The things other people chase, begin to chase you. Mm. The things that other people pursue, begin to pursue you. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom, everything else will be added. What does that mean? That means what the world seeks, God says, I'm just going to add that on to you. It's not that you're not going to be involved, you know, in work. It's not that you're just not going to be a workaholic. It's not that you're not going to prioritize your family. It's just you won't make an idol out of your family and you will lead your family to serve God. It's not that you will not work on your marriage. You will. But it will come without stress and striving because Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is guiding that relationship. 
It's not that you're not going to be intentionally involved in working in your ministry. It's that there will be a wind of the Holy Spirit blowing in your back, adding super to your natural. And you're looking, other people are chasing the very thing that it seems like pursuing you. Saul was chasing David. If he would have only been chasing God like that, he would have never ended up like he ended up. David was after God's heart. God clearly revealed that about David and he says, I found a man who's after me. He's chasing me. He's pursuing me. When he worships, he's hungry for me. When he meditates in my law day and night, he's hungry for me. God loves hungry people. Holy Spirit loves to be pursued. Holy Spirit loves to be wanted. Holy Spirit loves to be waited upon. He loves to be welcomed. You know, other people probably wanted the throne. God gave that to David. God gave him boldness. God gave him courage. God gave him anointing. God gave him prophetic insight. God gave him wonderful family. God gave him things that he didn't even seek, want, probably even pursue because he was hungry for the Holy Spirit. And when he committed sin, he quickly repented and asked God to cleanse his heart and said, Lord, take not your Holy Spirit from me. And I just want to encourage you, when you commit sin, close the gap between your sin and your repentance as fast as possible. Don't lose the sweetness of the Holy Spirit. Don't lose that closeness. Don't lose that hunger. Don't lose that, that pursuit of the Holy Spirit. You're going to pursue something anyway. You're going to run after something anyway. You're going to be hungry for something anyway. You're not just going to be passive. And people who come to me and sometimes they're like, I'm so passive toward God. No, you're not. Passive as a person. You're hungry for something. You're pursuing something. It could be video games. It could be movies. It could be sports. It could be a girlfriend that you're chasing that most likely is going to leave you. Because when you chase things outside of God, instead of God, they tend to disappoint us. I'm not being Debbie the Downer or being negative, but I just, I've done enough of vain pursuits in my life to know that you chase them, you get them. Sometimes you get those things and then those things destroy you and those things hurt you and those things, they're not what you expected they would be. And it's best to pursue the Lord, to pursue the Holy Spirit, to hunger for the Holy Spirit without ignoring our duties and responsibilities, without ignoring the things that God wants us to have. And then what's amazing is when you hunger for the Holy Spirit, your own desires get purified. Because the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and He will fulfill the desires of your heart. Your desires get sanctified. Your imagination gets sanctified. Your passions, your dreams, they almost go through the grinder. They go through an x-ray. They go through the purification. They go through the fire. And what comes out is, Lord, your will be done. Lord, I want what you want. Lord, here I am. Do what seems good to you, like David said. Lord, have pleasure in me. I want to give you this. I want to give you pleasure. I want to give you joy. I want to bring you a reward. I want to, you're my reward. I want to bring you honor and desires that you place in my heart. They are purified by my delight, by my hunger for God. And they can be trusted. You know why? Because they've been tested. They've been tried. They've been cleansed. Sometimes we start with desires that are full of lust, full of envy, full of ambition. They have nothing to do with God. We, we, we label God's stuff on it, but in reality, they're born out of frustration. They're born out of insecurity. But when those desires get dipped in fire and what comes out is, Lord, something that honors you, not to us, but to your name, belongs the honor and belongs the glory. I want to use my finances. I want to use my reputation. I want to use the platform. I want to use everything I have to honor you, Holy Spirit. A vessel that honors the Holy Spirit is the vessel Holy Spirit will honor. Drop this in the chat.
A vessel that honors the Holy Spirit is the vessel Holy Spirit will honor. Your hunger for the Holy Spirit honors Him. Your desire for the Holy Spirit is proven by your pursuit of the Holy Spirit. Don't be passive. Don't be parked spiritually, mediocre, complacent. Come on, get that engine going. Get into the Word. Push the plate aside. Get your hunger back. Get your longing, desire back for the Holy Spirit. Pursue Him and you will see you will not be disappointed. Pursue Him and you will see that you will be rewarded because those who seek the Lord will be rewarded. Come on somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. I want to take a moment right now and pray for those that are sick specifically. But before we do that, I want to pray for those that are currently don't have that hunger for the Holy Spirit. I want to ask the Lord to release that right now on you. I want to ask the Holy Spirit to release that on you right now. Lord, let your presence come right now in the name of Jesus. I ask you for every person that is watching and re-watching this right now. In the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, that you will just come with your presence. I ask you that you will revive those that have found themselves lost, found themselves discouraged, disappointed, found themselves stuck, found themselves in lukewarm, complacent cycle, spiritually struggling, character struggling, relationship struggling. They found their passions being misplaced. They found their pursuits being hijacked by life's responsibilities. I ask you right now, dear Jesus, who asked the Father to send the Holy Spirit, stir within us hunger for the Holy Spirit. Reveal to us your Holy Spirit. I ask you right now, Lord, that we will examine our hearts and if there are things that are not pleasing to you, if there is resentment, if there is backbiting, gossip, seeking drama, if there is lack of tenderness, if there is lack of kindness, forgiveness, we repent for these things. I ask you that you will make our hearts pure. Dear Jesus, purify our hearts with your blood. Dear Jesus, I ask you that you will cleanse us and give us brand new hearts. Renew our spirit. Lord, take not the sweetness of your Holy Spirit, the intimacy, that closeness with the Holy Spirit. As we walk about our day, as we live our life, let us host the Holy Spirit. Not harbor bitterness, not harbor jealousy, not harbor unforgiveness, not harbor resentment, not harbor disappointment, but host the Holy Spirit. Revive your people right now. Remove the scales from their eyes. Holy Spirit, I ask you that you invade that room right now by your presence. Holy Spirit, I ask you that you invade that house by your presence right now in the name of Jesus. Come Holy Spirit. We welcome you. Come Holy Spirit. We invite you. Come Holy Spirit. Manifest the presence of Jesus. Manifest your glory. Manifest your fire. Manifest your anointing. Reveal yourself. Let us know you more. Let us walk through our, our day relying on you partnering with you, casting our burdens on you, depending on you. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Drop this in the chat. I love you, Holy Spirit. In just a moment, I'm going to be praying for those that are sick. Before I do that, I want to encourage you to learn more about the Holy Spirit by studying God's Word, by spending time with Him, 
by reading books on the Holy Spirit. One of them, if you have not gotten this one, you can get this book. Download it on my website if you cannot afford to buy it or listen to it on Audible. But fill yourself with information. Become more familiar with the Holy Spirit. But the idea is not to be familiar. The idea is to be a friend. And how do you become a friend? Is you become familiar with, with who the Holy Spirit is. And then you begin to develop that hunger for the Holy Spirit. You begin to involve the Holy Spirit, partner with Him in your life. Partner with Him in your day. Invite Him to help you in whatever, your, whatever tasks you are undertaking. Communicate with Him. And most importantly, keep your heart, the contact point for the Holy Spirit, healthy, pure, holy, and focused on God. How you treat people matters because Holy Spirit does not love. Holy Spirit loves people and He is grieved when we intentionally hurt other people with our words, when we have no regard for their families, for their feelings, for their life. It grieves them. So don't do the things that grieve the Holy Spirit and do the things that please the Holy Spirit. Honor Him. Allow His power to flow through you throughout your day. Allow His presence to saturate you. In Jesus' name. Right now, let's take a moment and let's begin to pray for those that are sick. If you are watching this broadcast, if you are re-watching this, I want you to place your hand upon the part of the body where there is pain. Whatever sickness that you are facing, illness that you are facing right now, I want to agree with you for healing of your body. Jesus Christ can heal you. The power of the Holy Spirit is what brings healing. So, place your hand upon the part of the body where there is pain. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, I pray right now for the physical illnesses of people that are watching this, listening to this maybe on the audio podcast later. In the name of Jesus, let your presence come right now. I take authority over every sickness. I take authority over every disease. In Jesus' mighty name. I take authority over every unclean spirit tormenting and torturing your body, oppressing your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that sickness to leave right now. That generational curse be broken right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in your body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, come. Touch them right now. Holy Spirit, I welcome you right now. Heal them in the name of Jesus. Heal their sickness. Heal their disease. Heal their infirmity. That discomfort, heal it right now. Come on, just place your hand there. Invite the Holy Spirit right now. Arthritis, in the name of Jesus, I command you to go. High blood pressure, go in Jesus' name. Every pain in the back, be healed in the name of Jesus. I command every cyst, growth or cancer cell to dry up and leave right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every skin infection, every eye problem, hearing problem, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, manifest your healing power. Invade with your kingdom the physical infirmity of your people right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of of Jesus. I want you to receive that healing right now. Just drop this in the chat. Say, I receive healing touch. Just say that. Say, I receive healing touch. That healing touch is from the Holy Spirit. Just, just drop that in the chat. Say, I receive healing touch. Pain, leave right now in the name of Jesus. For those of you that are watching, I want you to examine your body. And if you notice that the healing is manifesting right now and you don't have any more of that pain, some of you will notice that just a little bit later. But if you notice that the pain is gone, um, let me know in the comments and then let me know by sending me an email at, pa at pastorvlad.org forward slash testimony. 
pastorvlad.org forward slash testimony. So we will drop that in the chat as well so that you can um, uh, send it to us as we are praying. Lord, we thank you for your grace. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness that you're showing right now to your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let your presence come. Let your spirit come in Jesus' mighty name and manifest your healing and manifest your power in their life in the name of Jesus. As you're noticing that the healing of God is manifesting, you um, testify to the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. I want to invite and you give you an opportunity. If you enjoyed this broadcast and if you are part of our fasting community and enjoy our ministry and have received a lot from our ministry, I want to invite you to consider uh, sowing into our ministry. Consider partnering with our ministry. Um, what we do is not only we lead a fasting community that encourages people to press into Jesus all around the world. We also produce books. Uh, through this ministry, um, we release books in many languages and we offer all of that for free of charge so that people can receive. We don't charge for the gospel. We don't charge for uh, books. People can get all of that downloaded. Now, if somebody wants a physical copy to be shipped to them, then they buy it on Amazon. That's a different one. We also release courses. We have over 10 courses on our website and over 100,000 people that actually are taking them and they're also free of charge. We release reading plans, you know, study guides, PDFs for people, travel, help other ministries. And so when you partner with this ministry, when you give, um, you're sowing into a soil that helps people to meet Jesus, encounter the Holy Spirit and receive healing and deliverance all around the world. Millions of people watch our videos every single month and they get spiritually re-energized. Many of them get born again. Many of them get healed. And so I just wanted to say thank you for those of you who are partnering, who have partnered in the past and who have given. For those of you who have never done it, I want to give you the opportunity, invite you to do so. And you can do that today. Just go to pastorvlad.org forward slash partner. Or you can give through Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. Um, you can give through, you know, YouTube chat. You can give through other means. Um, we appreciate you. We thank you. And we will do all of this for the glory of Jesus. Amen. And many people will meet the Holy Spirit and encounter the Lord. Amen.